You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis from the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast. He is Dalen Flowers. He joins us each and every week to talk about Ole Miss Podcast. He's an Ole Miss student. And he's probably um, spending spending some time getting ready for the finals right now. Yep, I uh, took one earlier today at noon. I went pretty good in terms of how I felt taking it. Um, then I've got two more throughout the week, and then I'll be done, man, and, and uh, getting ready for a little vacation time and uh, not having to be sleeping and worrying about academic stress for the next day. Yeah, and um, <laughs> Ole Miss is going to the Gator Bowl um, to face the Duke Blue Devils, and Dale. Something weird is happening, and that is in this era of opt-outs, we're seeing a lot of opt-ins. Like Trey Amos Mm -hmm. would be a prime candidate to opt out. He's playing in the ballgame, and this is starting to feel like it might be a little bit of a statement game by the Ole Miss Rebels, and they're just looking as a way to go out with 10 wins, with the win over the Duke Blue Devils, and just kind of impose their will on them. Yeah, I mean, although this is kind of a, a, I guess I would say salty time, I guess, for Ole Miss fans and players right now, because obviously this is not the result that we wanted. Um, you know, it's still a, a, a relaxing feeling to know that we have a lot of great players on this team, but characters, are sh- uh, players that show a lot of great character, you know, um, even the the some of the players that we, we have not heard an announcement yet. I've just seen them posting after the Georgia game beating Texas, just their true reaction to us not getting into the playoff and how much uh, love that they've shown for this program. Um, I think like you just talked about, um, you know, the, the way that this season has went and the way that obviously the, the now the final playoff rankings to end these guys still feel like they have one final task. And again, this is still another season for history, another season where you can get to double digit wins. And I mean, I mean, again, that's obviously not the reconciliation that we wanted here, but this is still another history uh, opportunity for this Ole Miss football team. Um, and, you know, I think despite all of the challenges that we've saw throughout this entire season, that this coaching staff has done a great job with culture. I mean, these players have come together really well and made a great, a great brotherhood. Um, and they want to go out one last time in an Ole Miss jersey and prove why they believe to has should have been and been uh, within the 12 best teams in the country. Um, and as well, look for some of these guys to just kind of try to improve their draft stock a little bit as well with this game. Um, I know some guys are, I'm sure, like Trey Amos, probably teetering in that maybe early second round, third round draft pick who maybe want to kind of advance to being a, a first round draft pick. So I'm excited, you know, and uh, even Jordan Watkins, who is a guy who's devoted his last couple of years to Ole Miss coming from Louisville. Um, he kind of made a tweet a couple of days ago, just him and his Louisville jersey scoring a touchdown against Duke. So I'm excited. And I think the players are honestly excited too. You know, I think that this is, uh, it's really, it's really cool, Stephen. You know, you don't see this uh, happen too often anymore. You know, just the the if you're not in the playoff atmosphere or New York Six Bowl, you don't really see teams having the opportunity to basically play a good chunk of their starting lineup that played in the regular season, playing in a I guess a bowl game that doesn't have as much meaning to it as others would. So it's really cool to just see the group of these guys that I know have kind of already announced they will be playing in the bowl game to see them one final time um, and go out there with a bang, hopefully. Yeah, and I'm going to be completely honest. As an Ole Miss fan, I had mentally prepared myself for a ton of opt-outs because the alternative is planning on a bowl game with all your starters, and then right before the game, everybody quits, and that's unbelievably deflating of what's going on because you genuinely want to see the guys one last time. So I was prepared for opt-outs just to mentally get there, and now that it's seeming that opt-ins are going And there's probably going to be one or two people that opt out of the game, but there's going to be enough there that it's going to be a fairly close to full strength roster going against the Duke Blue Devils. And Ole Miss is an 11 and a half point favorite in that game. And Dalen, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson right now. This is from well before you were born (laughs) by quite a bit. This is from when I, when 14 year old Steve woke up at 1030 in the morning to watch the Ole Miss Rebels play in the Gator Bowl against the Michigan Wolverines. Mm-hmm. That Michigan team was nine and three. That Michigan team lost three one score games, and that Michigan team was the best football team in the country. They came to the Gator Bowl pissed off that they had to play Ole Miss, mm-hmm. and they completely 
wiped the floor with Ole Miss that day. It was 35-3. to three. It wasn't even that particular close. I'm starting to feel like that is more relevant than we know, except Ole Miss might be on the other side this time. Yeah, um, I mean, it's kind of intriguing just playing Duke. I know when you when people look at that, you know, you see Duke in a football scenario, you don't think too much of it, but they've had a pretty great year. Um, uh, Manny Diaz, his first year, I think a lot of people, myself included, when Mike Elko left, my expectations weren't to see Duke go 9-3. And, and, I mean, their three losses are to Miami, uh, Georgia Tech, and to – um, SMU. So I, that, that's still a quality football team. Malik Murphy, uh, their starting quarterback who came from Texas this past offseason, um, he's looked pretty good, especially being a dual third quarterback. Um, so I, I, I mean, I, I expect a lot of Duke players to play in this game as well. I think they, they're excited to have the opportunity um, in their first year under Manny Diaz to have a 10 win season. So I think it's going to be a compelling, uh, it's going to be a compelling story for both sides. And I think that's just going to make for a great game, which I think in general is what we as fans want and, and you know like you said um the history of this team you know regardless of the situation that's happened this was concealed as the last dance um and so for me it's comforting to see a lot of these guys that kind of got here when i first arrived in oxford um and some of the guys that kind of when got here that you know that i watched them play up close for so many years now it's uh it's really just cool to see them most of them come together one final time um, and play together as a team um, and improve. You know, I think I kind of talked to Zach Moreth uh, yesterday about this, uh, but, you know, Matt Corral kind of did what he did in the Sugar Bowl a few years ago. And even though Ole Miss ends up losing that game to Baylor, he uh, leaves the game with an unfortunate injury. Um, I thought that showed a lot of character and heart and just how much love that Matt Corral had for this university and this program. And I think this uh, definition of what some of these players are doing now. You know, Jackson Dart's more than likely going to play. I expect uh, guys like J.J. Pegues and Jared Ivey to more than likely play in the Gator Bowl as well. It, it's it's um, a true character of how much not only Lane Kiffin has transformed what this program means to college football, but the inside depth of it, how much of a culture he's actually developed positively in a time that he's utilized a transfer supporter like no other and is still bringing players together in a way that, you know, is almost undescribable in the way that he's done it. Yeah, and Trey Amos deciding to play in the game, that's a narrative changer on this football game. Yeah. Because he he was a one and done player, a transfer, somebody that was viewed that would be a guaranteed one hundred percent opt out in this game. If he's playing, that means that any of them can play. We don't mm -hmm. know who is going to opt out, but it may look like Ole Miss did last year in the Peach Bowl, where the only opt out was um, Cedric Johnson. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and that's a great point because Cedric Johnson ends up getting drafted. Um, and, you know, I think some of the other guys, I think Dejon Anthony had a pretty good game last year and kind of helped excel a little bit of his draft stock, which ends up helping him get drafted a little earlier than I thought he would in the draft. Um, and, and, as, and as well, it gave opportunities like last year was kind of a, a, a weird year for Caden Prescorn. You know, he comes back late against Ali. He comes into the season starting against Alabama and we see a little bit of influx with him. And then that Peach Bowl, we finally get to see just how great Caden Prescorn was. Um, and so you may you may see an opportunity like this. Uh, uh, within this game, depending on who comes back, you, we kind of talked about together uh, Aiden Williams a couple a couple weeks ago. We may see an emergence of what Aiden Williams may be re able to really do. And so um, I, I expect a, a, f a collection of more guys to as well opt back in just to uh, kind of solidify this actual last dance, even though this is not the last dance we wanted. But um, regardless, I'm proud of this football team, and I'm uh, really thankful that we have a great group of players. But as well, these guys have – commanded their way as being great human beings outside of the football field as well. Yeah, and these two teams are the two top tackle for loss teams in the entire country. Manny Diaz in his Gator Ball press conference actually said, come for the weather, stay for the tackles for loss because both of these defenses get after you. Now, the benefit is, for those who do not know, Manny Diaz was the defensive coordinator at Penn State last year. So the defense yep. <laughs> that Ole Miss saw in the Peach Bowl – was the Manny Diaz defense. And we saw that Lane Kiffin was capable of putting up a good good plan against that defense. I think that is interesting that basically you have a free shot against the defense that with better personnel than you're going to be seeing in this game. 
Yeah, it's going to be a familiar foe, like you said, from the Peach Bowl last year. I think, again, that's another storyline to this game that, you know, initially when you hear Ole Miss versus Duke, you may think, ah, there's nothing really going to be brought out of that. Uh, but that adds another storyline to this game. Um, I think, again, Manny Diaz has done a fantastic job in year one at Duke, um, and I'm sure – uh, the Duke fan base will show out really well going to Jacksonville. And so I think that's going to be an exciting repertoire for it as well. I think this is a game for Charlie Wise to just show that everything that's kind of happened this year is not necessarily what he's able to really do fully. And I think this opportunity, again, will be able to showcase how good he can be. Look, this Duke team, again, you know, they you look at, you hear Duke and you think football, you may not think of much, but this Duke team has put up some quality wins this year, has a quality offense and defense like Steven just mentioned. So it's it's definitely going to be a game that's going to be a battle of the trenches um, and expect Duke to have a, they have a really versatile defense as well. A lot of balanced guys on the defensive side of the ball. So it's, it's going to be, I, I honestly think, a fun little back and forth game. Um, and so I'm excited to see how this turns out and as the weeks go by, which players from both teams kind of fully opt in and then we can kind of get a, a greater sense of how to kind of match up this game in terms of key players and matchups on both sides. After, as the next three weeks happen, we're going to find out about that at all uh, mm -hmm. as well. When we come back, we'll talk about Logan Diggs potentially playing in that Gator Bowl, and we'll also move to the transfer portal. Stick around for that. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if that bet wins. Every college football playoff game is featuring a home team that's favored by more than a touchdown. And I might be crazy, but Tennessee may be more built for cold weather than Ohio State. That might be the upset game to play. The FanDuel Sportsbook gives you access to everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So whenever you get into the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place those bets. Join FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win that first $5 bet, that's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more on FanDuel. It's an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And nothing delivers comfort and joy just like the unrivaled quality and taste of Omaha Steaks. It is guaranteed perfection in every single bite. And right now you can save an unforgettable on unforgettable gifts with 50% off site-wide at omahasteaks.com. Plus, you can score an extra $30 off with promo code COLLEGE. With five generations of experience, they consistently deliver the world's best steak experience by gifting experts at Omaha Steaks. They have made it easy to deliver the perfect gift thoughtfully with curated gift packages featuring gourmet favorites from legendary steaks to mouthwatering desserts and more. Save 50% off site-wide for a limited time at omahasteaks.com. Plus, our listeners, listeners get an extra $30 off with the promo code COLLEGE. That's 50% off at O-M-A-H-A steaks.com and an extra $30 off with promo code COLLEGE. Minimum purchases may uh, um, apply. All right, Dalen, whenever you look at this, I was going to go straight into the transfer portal this segment, but uh, ahead of time, I, I do think it's a year out, and if Logan Diggs can go, Logan Diggs needs to play in this game. He, he needs to probably be the starting running back on the field, potentially, and see what you have and determine how active you need to be in the transfer portal. A thousand percent, Stephen. This is a situation that we had uh, talked about with Trey Harris a while ago before the Florida game um, and was kind of talking about his availability. Did we think that it was OK to play him? And with the potential of still getting into the playoff at the time, we thought that he, we probably should play Trey Harris just to get have him some reps before that opportunity of getting in the playoffs because his last time on the field was LSU. You know, Logan Diggs was a guy that I think most people thought that we would probably see against Florida. We ended up not. And if we didn't see him against Florida, we thought we would see him against Mississippi State. We did not as well. Um, again, this is a guy that I've talked about so much with you. Uh, I'm just so high of his game and the way he plays the, the game, um, the way he sees the game as well. Um, I, I, I hopefully expect Logan Diggs to play in this game. 
Um, I think he brings a uniqueness to this running back room that has honestly been missed throughout the entire, despite all the drama that's gone through it. Um, and and a, he's an experienced guy. This guy has played throughout the SEC before, uh, throughout his time in Notre Dame, has played through a lot of big games as well. This is a guy that brings experience, uh, a knack for the end zone. And Logan Diggs brings just a, a bit of freshness to this team that's kind of needed this time of the year. And as well, when teams are watching film, they haven't seen him this year, at least not in this system. So you don't really know how to scheme around Logan Diggs if, if I'm a, a, a Duke defense. So that brings something to the table that maybe Duke cannot be really prepared for until they actually get on the field. So I would really love to see Logan Diggs play against Duke. Um, I think that We've heard the news since sort of that he may have been given a chance. Well, I think now that we know this game will be played on January 2nd, I feel like just from my perspective, again, I don't know the inside depths of this, but this will give him enough time to be a little bit more healthy, if not 100 percent, really close to 100 percent. Um, and allow him to at least have, I, I would hope, maybe like 10, 15 carries against Duke, like you said. Um, and so which will give him the the enough situational awareness to understand how this offense runs. Um, so we can also understand maybe a little bit how he plays. Um, more with this team and moving forward, um, and maybe just how he communicates with the team, how he blocks uh, in the passing game, um, maybe is how good as he can be in a receiver as well. So um, I really hope to see Logan Diggs play in the bowl game. I think this is a great opportunity now, considering the situation with the running back room. And um, we obviously, you know, have some injuries there. And also we don't know who will end up opting in and opting out or maybe even transferring from that room uh, going into the bowl game. So I think this is the, the greatest opportunity now to essentially bring Logan Logan digs in and have maybe a little bit of explosiveness to the run game for this offense that we really didn't see throughout the entirety of the regular season. We'll see. And with the transfer portal opening up today, it's at least interesting. Um, Ahmad Hardy from Lawrence County in Mississippi from Louisiana Monroe is visiting later on this week. We talked mm -hmm. about that. We talked about Fluff, Fluff Bothwell. Um, we talked about um, the receiver. What's his name? Um, from Tulsa, Williams. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked a little bit about um, Womack, the defensive lineman from LSU. That's on tomorrow's show. We'll close out here today talking about Marcellus Barnes, the defensive back um, from Syracuse that is in the portal. He's originally from Chattanooga. And my point is there seems to be a little bit of a pipeline developing between this mm -hmm. staff and the – Chattanooga schools and there's a rumor that Barnes may be visiting later on in the week be having in a Baylor and Macaulay there's definitely worse things yeah Marcellus is a freshman so um for me that's exciting I mean he has a you could say a lack of experience but the experience that he was shown on the field this year looked like a guy that's been playing college football for three or four years now um I'm excited for him because you know I, I hope that Chris Paul Jr. comes back, um, but we obviously won't know that yet. Um, and, you know, I think Sontarian Perkins will more than likely be back as well. So to kind of add a little bit of depth to that running to that linebacker room um, and, and maybe to help out on that edge, like we see Sontarian play a lot as well, will be helpful. Um, Marcellus is a young young and fast guy. So uh, giving a little, a little bit of speed to a P Golden defense that we watched this year, uh, they, they love to get to the line of scrimmage. They love to pressure the quarterback. And so that will give Pete Golden a, a, a sense of comfortability, uh, knowing that they have a guy out there that can do a lot of different things, but especially play well on the line of scrimmage and get downhill to a quarterback really well. Um, and as well, you know, I haven't watched too much film on him, but the, the little film that I, I've seen is when he gets to the quarterback, um, he's good at evading the quarterback. And when I say that is when the quarterback tries to evade a sack um, and tries to make a play happen, He's there at the same time and he will continue to finish and finish and finish sacks. And I love that about this kid. Um, and so this is going to be hopefully a great beacon of opportunity to add to this defense next year, because I know how Pete Golding looks at this trans supporter now, especially now that he's built a great resume here. He's built a great staff here at Ole Miss. They have the keys to do and recruit just about, I would say, anybody in the country. I mean, we saw this team get Princely and Mommy Yellen and Walter Nolan, two of the biggest names in the portal last year. So for me, that says we can go out and get any guy to play for this defense in the coming future. All right. Thanks again for making the Locked On Almost podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. Dalen Flowers from the Rebel Walk, the Dalen Show, the whole nine yards. What do you got going on this week besides finals, bud? 
Oh, nothing much. Uh, like you said, finals and uh, getting out at Oxford Friday and uh, heading to New York uh, Sunday, actually. So that's uh, my plans for the next couple of days after finals week. So, But uh, just trying to make it through finals week. Best of luck to any college students watching that are in the midst of college uh, finals right now. I know it's an uh, uh, intense time, so best of luck to you all. Yeah, it's absolutely very well. I will talk to you next week, buddy. Um, take care and be safe on your travels, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it as always. Hotty toddy, y'all. Hotty toddy, man.